To understand what's on the mind of Christ. When he raises up his own disciples, raises up members of the church, it's not just to make them righteous and holy. That's great. He wants us to be holy, he wants us to be righteous. But he's raising us up not just as members of the church, but as disciples, as apostles, as evangelists, taking out the word of God so that other people will also have this benefit of the gospel given unto them so that the purpose of his coming to this world will be fulfilled that those who are sinners will let you know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and then they come to uh, put their life in the hands of Jesus they become born again like you and I we're looking at Mark chapter 16 Mark chapter 16. We're looking at verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm sure you understand this chapter. It's a chapter that talks about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord had had a full ministry and a fulfilled life. He had actually gone about doing good and healing all that oppressed of the devil. And then he spoke to them how they will move out of darkness and come into the light. How they will come, confide in him, trust him, believe him, have faith in him so that they will not perish. While he was here on earth, he had assured everyone, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever who in Israel, Whosoever in any other nation, whosoever among the Gentiles will believe, will not perish, but have everlasting life. And the very purpose why he came is so that this life that he came to give, the abundant life, the eternal life, the spiritual life, will become yours and mine, will belong to virtually everybody. And now he was crucified. You know that was according to the plan of God. Because the plan of God is that it will offer, it will give, it will surrender, it will sacrifice his very life for the salvation of humanity. And so he went to the cross and he died. And after that death on the cross of Calvary, you know the story, he was buried. And then on the third day he rose from the dead. Now if you were, that you be with some people, and now you died. And the Jews thought, your enemies thought, it's all over. That nothing will happen anymore. And then you rose up on the third day, and you appear to the people that were your followers, who are committed to you, who are your disciples. I'm asking you, what will you be telling them? What will be interested in passing across to them? As Jesus rose from the dead, then he got all these disciples together. He had appeared unto them and he showed them many infallible proofs. That means proof of his resurrection that nobody could gain say, that nobody could contradict. Everybody knew among the disciples of Jesus, our master, our Lord, our Savior, Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he rose from the dead. Now if you were, what will you tell them at such a time? What information will you pass across to them? What revelation will you give them? You know, there are people that may think that the best thing at this time now will be for Jesus Christ to describe all that happened all these three days to wind the grave. 
and what's going to happen in the great beyond. But you know the most important thing, which is evangelism. Telling the people why he died. Telling the people why Jesus went to the cross, sacrificed, surrendered his life, and now his blood had been shed. That's why he gave them the great commission. And now as you look at that verse 15, and he said unto them, and he said unto them, he said unto the people who believed, you see, this work is for the believers. It's not unto them outside, outside the camp, outside the body of Christ, outside the, uh, the, the, the assembly or the congregation of the believers. But he said, unto them believers, unto them children of God, unto them the people that have believed on him and they were saved. Their sins were taken away. They had the assurance within them. We are children of God. And now he said unto them, and if you are a child of God, then you fit among that congregation, among that group, among those people of God. And he's saying unto you today, what did he tell them? Go ye into all the world. Stop right there. Go ye into all the world. And he understood that. And we need to understand that. Look at verse 20. And they went forth. And they went forth. Isn't that great? That the Lord Jesus Christ, having risen from the dead, he told them, go ye into all the world. And then after Jesus went back to heaven, and they went forth. What did he tell them to do? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What did they do? Look at verse 20. And they preached everywhere. And they preached everywhere. You see the obedience of the early church. The moment they heard, then they rose up and they went forth to do exactly what the Lord had called them to do. And isn't that a wonderful evidence that we actually believe the Lord, we actually accept the Lord, and we actually receive everything the Lord is giving unto us. As the Lord tells us on Monday like this, He is going into all the world. And then on Tuesday, the very following day, you go into all the buses, all the taxis, and all the bus stops, and all the places of work, and all the marketplaces, and all the offices, and you actually go forth, and you do what the Lord has called you to do. And they went forth, and they preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. The Lord likes to walk with the obedient. The Lord likes to walk with the faithful. The Lord likes to walk with the people that take his word seriously. And they went forth, and the Lord said, These are obedient people, faithful people, dependable people, trustworthy people. I'm going to work with them. And he went with them, and he walked with them. And then we're told, he confirmed the word with signs following. Come back to verse 15. And preach the gospel to every creature. No discrimination. And you will not kind of isolate this group. This one cannot hear. This one will not listen. Preach the gospel to every creature. And in preaching the gospel to every creature, we do it one on one. Actually, they had seen the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, before the cross. Number two, on the cross. And later they will see after the cross. Before the cross, what did he do? One on one. He preached the word to Nicodemus. One on one. Before the cross, what did he do? He preached the gospel to the woman of Samaria, one on one. What did he do? Before the cross, he preached the word and he brought this man Zacchaeus to know him. Today, his salvation entered into this house. What did he do? Before the cross, he spoke to Peter, Simon Peter, follow me, I'll make you officials of me. Before the cross, what did he do? Personal evangelism, Matthew, he saw him collecting taxes, rise up, follow me, and then he rose up and he followed him before the cross one on one preaching the word personal evangelism how about on the cross do you remember on the cross this man on the cross the thief on the cross lord remember me when you come into your kingdom i see unto you today you'll be with me in paradise one on one after the resurrection i told you before the cross i told you on the cross and now we come after the cross after the burial, after the resurrection, now Saul was going on the way to Damascus, one on one. And a light shone around him, brighter 
than the brightness of the sun. And then he said, Saul, Saul. He called him by name. One on one. Personal evangelism. Why persecutest thou me? It's not for you to kick against the priest. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And then what shall I do, Lord? And eventually, you know, before Ananas got to him, he said, Brother Saul, that man had been converted. The Lord has shown us the example that whether it is before the cross, or on the cross, or after the cross, we reach people one by one. And we touched their lives. And they were able to preach the gospel unto them. And the gospel they hear as they receive it. And they repent of their sins. And they rely on the Lord. Believing on the Lord. Then they are saved. And their lives are turned around. They become new creatures in Christ. Now the early church took that word. That's the word of the Lord. They took it so seriously in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 4. Chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. I'm going to uh, make some illustration to you. Now, if you start from Acts chapter 1 and you go to Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, now up to chapter 8. And they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And let me just make it like this. Let's take this just illustration. This is not a doctrine. This illustration. Let's take a chapter for a year. And then and let, let's take the time that deeper life our church began. 1973. And then we, we were born again. The people were coming in. They were hearing the word of God. They were getting born again. Saved. Children of God. And then eventually, as they came that first year, the zeal of the Lord and the passion and the enthusiasm and the eagerness and the fire of the Holy Spirit within us, and we went everywhere preaching the word. Even to the second year and the third year and the fourth year, maybe to the eighth year. If you add age to 73, you're going to have 81. And at least, you know, all that period, we still kept on preaching the word. We were not ashamed in any taxi. In any boss, in any, in any community, in any locality, it was preaching the word. And the, what was important for us at that time, I'm talking about from chapter 1 to chapter 8. I'm talking about year 1 to year 8. What was important for us? Just preaching the word everywhere. And anywhere you have a member of this church standing, or anywhere you find a member of this church sitting, anywhere you find us walking, we open our Bible, we give our tracts, we open our mouth, and we preach the word unto them. Now, after some time, we're looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And I'm reading now from verse 4 and from verse 5. Revelation chapter 4. 2 verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast led thy first love. Uh, the Lord was writing an a, a, a epistle letter. He was sending the message of word to the churches of Asia Minor. And this is representative. We've studied Revelation already. You know this, that this is representative of the church. In fact, this is the first church of the seven that Jesus Christ sent a message to. And this first church is a picture of the early church, the first church. And it came to the time evangelism went to the back burner. That means evangelism was relegated to the background. Other things came to the forefront. Activity. Other things. Church administration and church growth and church development and caring for the people and he quite a lot of good good things they are not bad things but evangelism the most important went to the background isn't that what is happening in our own church here you know in our own church here we thank god for teaching the teaching is there we thank god for church administration administration is there we thank god for church activity activity is there we thank god for church programs programs are there but 
We have shifted away from Acts chapter 8. We have shifted away from year 8, year 1 to year 8. That evangelism, giving out the gospel, preaching the gospel to every creature is no more the art, the attitude of the activity of every member of the church. And the Lord is saying, I saw what against you because you have led your first law. Then it says in verse 5, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first words. What was he saying? Recover the lost art of evangelism. Oh, you see, but he doesn't mention evangelism there. Yes, I understand. But he mentions the first love. Love towards God. That puts God as number one. Love towards the Lord Jesus Christ that puts Christ and his cross and Calvary and his sacrifice and his great commission as number one. Love towards the souls of the people that are perishing that will put them as number one in our program, in our desire, in our aspiration, in our ambition. Love towards the kingdom of God to expand the kingdom of God and decrease the kingdom of darkness. Love towards heaven that you will love heaven so much you want a lot of people to get to heaven. The first love. And Jesus said, you have left your first love. Then he says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art falling. What's the meaning of that? Remember deeper life, year one, year two, year three, up to year eight. When everybody took personal evangelism as the number one thing. That whatever you were doing in the church, now actually we said in that, at that time in the ministry, in the ministry, whatever you were doing in the ministry, the most important thing, the most essential thing, and the thing that was on top of your heart is reaching out and talking to everybody about the word of the Lord and about the salvation of their soul. And the Lord is saying, bring it back, recover it. It is lost already, but bring it back. How do you do that? Look at 2 Kings chapter, chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And I'm reading to you from verse 1. Recovering the lost art of personal evangelism. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now. The place where we dwell with thee is too strange for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. Every man a beam. Every man a beam. Don't you know we're building the temple of God. We're building an habitation for God. And the instruments or the tools or the blocks or the elements that God uses in building that edifice are souls that are one into the kingdom. And every man has a part to play. Every brother, every sister.